Jamie here, Jamie here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. May 2nd, 2024. Going to be really quick. Going to talk really fast. If I talk about a stock, the chart room. So if you go to the chart channel, that's where the charts are that I talk about. Also, if you just watch this, when I upload it, the charts will be on there. But take a look at the market. We are moving higher. Who would have thought that after yesterday's reversal from the highs? We were trading kind of around the 500 level on the spy for almost the entire day until the two o'clock hour the fed statement came out as expected uh markets rallied a little bit and then powell came on and his spin was just a tad dovish and i think expectations or fears were that maybe it was going to be a little hawkish so i think that gave uh, or at least alleviated some of those fears and the market rallied and then it just reversed all the way up to 508 and change on the spy then we close at 500 uh silver lining is the vix was flat or actually a little red so it continues to be the leading indicator right now it's a it's down 2.4 percent at 15 so probably bodes well uh i probably don't want to see a reversal today so i'm hoping we hold the gains we'd love to see over 504.50 i keep talking about that handle and i think once we can get through that then maybe we, we start working up to 512 or so in the coming days we have earnings from uh apple coin a couple of names i'll get for I'll talk about in a second that could help and then we have the jobs report tomorrow so that's that. Take a look at the VIX. I'm still under that trend line. Again, you would you look at the VIX chart and you would think that we had a kind of a boring session. But meanwhile, it was a volatile session with a intraday move of over nearly 2%, 1.6%, I think it was. And funny enough, the market was implying via the S&P straddle that there was going to be a 1.1% move yesterday, which would be the highest move for a Fed day since, since May of 2023. And sure enough, we did have a volatile day. Thankfully, people look at the market uh, the next day in the paper and says, oh, down a quarter percent, nothing crazy. Meanwhile, if you watch the action, you say, yeah, it was pretty volatile. All right, so let's get on some individual names. Uh, not going to talk of uh, turn. I post a little tweet on, on turn. I've talked about this one for a while. I'll continue to look for strikes, for, not, for further out strikes into the back half of 2024. You know, $260 million in cash, $320 million mar market cap. I think it's a, a great story. All the way up to 539 after the Fed, while the Fed was going, and then it reversed from 539 to close of 508. Hopefully find some footing. 50-day moving average is at 626. The 500, 200-day uh, moving average is 594. I think once those areas break, it's off to the race, especially as a FOMO play. The more that people look at these GLP-1 names, I think it, the better it is. This morning, uh, well, overnight, NVO reported earnings. A little bit disappointing. It started to rally back a little bit, but they talked a lot about the supply issues and uh, th that way so their earnings didn't come out as great as i guess people are looking uh, looking at especially when llry reported on tuesday a monster beat and raise so again i i think the lower supply the, the supply constraints just bodes well for other people in that space to come in there's there needs to be multiple players because they can't keep up with demand so that's turn farm turns pharmaceutical cdlx finally carlytics finally added some some strikes yesterday after i got it, it was 1305 went all the way up to 1360 and then similar to turns reverse course to close at 1299 after the fed after the market reversed still like this one i think it trades up near 15 before earnings they report on wednesday may 1st is it after hours uh they'll report yeah after the market closed so plenty of time to be able to lock some in and, and ride the rest that's kind of how i'd love to trade it it's gonna be you know i'm, st I'm still very bullish and i'm surprised it's under 20 bucks here Hopefully that earnings, they can alleviate the concerns with the offerings, talk a little bit about their Amex partnership. Maybe there's new partnerships they're announcing. And I think I think it trades much higher in, in the coming weeks. Uh, IIPR, I, I said it on my rant yesterday. I, I could see this going 120 bucks. IIPR is going to benefit from any regulation that's removed from cannabis, anything that's done with the banking sector for cannabis, uh, legalization in states, all that stuff just bodes well for for IIPR, they're they're going to reap the benefits regardless of uh, little little moving parts, right? So if you have little you have stocks like CGC, ACB, and all those other pot names, there's a lot of moving parts that they have to do to, to execute to to really grow and things like that. IIPR is just going to reap the rewards of all the restrictions that are being removed. So I'm I'm surprised it's not higher. I think it trades up near 120 in the coming weeks. I was able to lock some of my May strikes in for 100. percent I'll probably lock a couple more in if it gets over 110 today, and then I'll just ride those in the Junes for for higher in the, in the coming weeks. Great story. I, I put put the slide. You take a look. It's only it's, it's a six year old company. It's a recently uh, in, 
the recent inception for the read i think it's six years ago great director team already took a you know i've said this before they took a read a, they they were uh, i don't know if they took that one to incept from inception and then they liquidated it. billions of dollars they turned it into then it came into this space they see an opportunity so think you know irpr heads much higher in the coming weeks uh other names i'm looking at so you know unfortunately dell and i thought that was gonna be a lot down a lot more yesterday than it was it, it wasn't uh all the way but then it started to fade into the morning 117.43 then back up to 122 after the fed <clears throat> then close at 118.78 it's back over 120 here still watching that i'm not going to add june strikes just yet um biogen start to come back 218.66 in the afternoon before closing at 216.13 i said it yesterday pfizer uh, rallied biogen rallied the, the previous week on earnings it's only going to take a three or four percent move on biogen in the next two days for my calls to come back not only that i'll probably look for some later strikes i think biogen is going to head to two two twelve well 230 235 240 in the coming weeks um trupanion i thought trupanion reported earnings this morning so i'm sitting there waiting then i go check the investor relations said oh sure enough it's in it's after the close monster reversal yesterday so on wednesday it sold off like seven percent on no news under 23 and then yesterday it just rallied into it was 23.50 or so by by the fed at two o'clock and then it went from 23.50 all the way up to 24.65 in a matter of an hour and then reverse course back down to close of 23.32 huge short interest 45 percent short interest going to be volatile after the close today any little miss or any snafu <clears throat> the short's going to pile in and pressure it if there's any kind of rosy guidance, any upside guidance, any any positive glimmers on that report and conference call, I think it I think it squeezes. So the thing is, that my May strikes, which have turned back into the red, up they're expensive. So I probably want to look for for later dated strikes to play for a move over thirty bucks. So I may look to lock them the rest the maze in and get higher strikes and expensive strikes, depending on what it does here today. If I can get them out for at least flat, because I'm not going to sell them for a loss. Uh, that's true, Panion. Some other names. So if we reverse today, of course, I'll be looking at my my typical typical names that I look for hedge plays. Uh, Broadcom, AV, AVGO, Lam Research, MDB, possibly CrowdStrike, maybe even ServiceNow. Some of these names that are just going to sell off in sympathy, not because of the underlying fundamentals of the stock, just because, again, that I've said this because they're up so much so, so soon that at some point profit takers just come in. So that's my rant. <clears throat> CGC, ACB, I still like those. CGC at some point when it starts to, maybe when it starts to break 15 again, I'll look to to add some more strikes. But right now it's so bumpy and volatile. It was down 28% yesterday. You would think that's a huge sell-off, but putting it in perspective of the rally on on Tuesday, it kind of, you, you have to think few, some folks are going to take some profit, especially if they're sitting on that name for so long. So, uh, you know, at some point I'll revisit that to add some more strikes and hopefully get an opportunity to lock the rest of my May strikes in. Same with ACB. At some point I'll lock some of my Junes in. Um, I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to add any more strikes just yet, but I'll wait for some of those to probably to, to get back over the highs they hit on Tuesday. And that's my rant, folks. Let's have a great day. 13 minutes to 9 o'clock. Uh, rock and roll.